Authors Vlog Supplemental 21.5. So not a lot's been happening the last two weeks. Um, I have been steadily writing. As you can see, I'm almost done with this page. And I broke the 50,000 mark yesterday. So that was awesome. Did another thousand words today, hoping to pump out another thousand words tomorrow. I'm, what, five, six thousand words behind? About five thousand words behind right now. So yeah, about two weeks worth. So I kind of need to catch up. So I'm trying to push to at least 4,000 words a week right now to try to catch up in a couple of weeks. So, but I've been writing. I've got it up to, last week I wrote five times in one week. Five times. That was pretty awesome. I don't usually write five times in one week, but that's kind of what I've been pushing for. So that's awesome. So a couple days ago I hit, I was after my midpoint. I kind of got a little bit into the reaction of what had happened in midpoint and I wasn't sure where to go from there because I have the bad guys close in section which I hate. It's the worst part to write. It's always terrible. It's always really hard for me to write. And I'm not the only one. It throws Shavam too. So it, it's one of those things that's very difficult. Movies tend to just crash and burn and the bad guys close in. So it's a tricky part to do. We're gonna do an episode on it probably not this week in the next week or two. Um, this Sunday we're doing comedy so we're gonna film that pretty soon. It's probably gonna be in maybe next week maybe the week after we'll do the bad guys close in section because it's a really tough section. It really is. The second half of the book is rough. So last week we talked about descriptions. The only thing I can think to add to that is something we mentioned in brief as we were going through and that's to save your really good descriptions for really important scenes. Otherwise you can spend a lot of time trying to decide exactly how to word something and that can take up a lot of your time. A lot of it also depends on what you want to write. Um, we have a friend of ours, actually Chandler, he was in our dialogue episode. He tends to write very fudgy dense prose. His stuff is very descriptive, it's very evocative, and it's really dense, but it tends to be very short. So he can get away with making it extremely dense like that with a lot of really interesting description. It's very moody. There's a lot of allusion to other mysteries and things in the ether that you don't see. It's really beautiful to read. It's exhausting to write. I absolutely know that. <laughs> And it's, it's very tiring to read sometimes, but you, it's very difficult to do that for an entire book because you kind of run out of ways to describe things. So if you tend to write that way, you still can just know that it's going to be very difficult or it's going to be very tiring because you're going to have to spend a lot of time going, okay, well, I've used consumed by the sun like four times. I can't keep using that same description for this one event. You have to change up your descriptions a little bit or your reader gets very tired of seeing the same thing over and over. This is kind of where we get into cliche territory. You know, things like his heart pounded in his chest and things like that are considered cliches. But the problem is you almost have to have some cliches or you have nothing else to write or your description becomes so abstract that no one has any idea what the hell you're talking about. So don't worry overly about cliches unless you have 50 of them. Try to make some really interesting descriptions. Find new ways to describe things like instead of saying his heart pounded in his chest, you know, you could say it rammed against his ribs or some other way of describing it that isn't quite so cliche or something we haven't seen before. But save those for specific situations. Save those for the really important scenes. You don't typically need to spend a lot of time with really interesting and intricate descriptions in a dialogue heavy scene. Usually focusing on the dialogue itself and making that very interesting with just a few basic actions is enough. You want to save the descriptions for when they matter. Just like everything else, they need to hold weight and they need to do a job. At the same time, you don't want them taking away from the job that something else is doing in that scene. What you do want to do is find a way to describe something in a very interesting way, if you can, for those scenes when you want that. Emotionally charged scenes, first impressions of things that are important, those are great places to use really interesting descriptions and to really dig into how you can use words to paint a picture in a new and interesting and unique way. Um, 
I bring it up all the time, but the two things that Nora Roberts writing as J.D. Robb does well in her In Death series. In the earlier part of the series, the two things she did really, really well is dialogue is very interesting. She has very punchy, fun, interesting, snappy dialogue that's very interesting to read and very evocative of who the characters are by how they speak and what they say and how they say it. So that's one thing. The second thing she does really well is descriptions of rooms and places that Eve goes to. Eve, will, she's a detective, she goes into a room and she'll describe the feeling of the room but in only a couple of sentences usually and you get a very good idea of what the room looks like. She'll go in and she'll pull out these descriptions like there was a couch of screaming red. That, that's one she actually really likes. The screaming red is a big one. You know, it was screaming red. That's an interesting way to describe the color red. You understand it without using blood or crimson or any of the cliched ways of describing the color red. Screaming red tells you what it is. C.S. Friedman does a good job with pulling you into the emotions and the mindset and the internal landscape of the characters that she follows. And she has a lot of good world building too. A lot of good world building. But I can't think of anybody else right off the top of my head who does like really interesting descriptions. So I guess that's all I have to say about descriptions. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we're doing comedy this week. So that's cool. That's really Shavam's bailiwick. He really loves doing comedic stuff. And I love reading comedic stuff. So that'll be, that'll be a fun one. But, so I'm writing. I um, had kind of a stumble with a midpoint, but I got over that. And I'm doing this. And, oh, so I know some people early on asked about Twitter account. I do have a Twitter account. I never use it. I will start using it this week. I have to remember what it is. It's at Stella Webb. I logged in on my iPad. I will use it more often. So... I, I will do so. I will totally do so more often. I will tweet at least once a day. How's that? <laughs> it's not really my thing. I think I'm too old. So I never, I didn't like grow up on Twitter or anything like that. So I will use Twitter more often. I think that'll be great. So I'll do that. I'll update my picture and everything. Cause I had like a mask on. I don't know what my, I don't know what I was doing, but whatever. So I will be on Twitter. I promise I will start doing that. If you want to follow me at Stella Web, knock yourself out. I can't say I'll be saying anything terribly interesting, but I'll be on Twitter. So there's that. Like I said, we're going to talk more about the bad guys close in and do another episode where we talk about how to kind of plot that out, how to think about it, you know, things like that. We'll do mine so you'll actually get to see what I'm doing with that plot line. Also, keep an eye on editing because, like I said, in the other one about beta readers and alpha readers, now's the time to get those. Now's the time to start talking to them. I know we talk about don't edit um, a lot unless you're one of those who can do that and keep them separated. Try to try to keep them separated. But now's the time to get your first half out to your alpha reader. Have them start reading it so that as soon as you're done writing, you can take the notes from your alpha reader, alpha reader, alpha reader and start applying them in your edit because you want to get that done as quickly as possible so you can do that first half and give it to your beta readers while you're editing your second half. So, and then you want to take the feedback that they give you from that first half and while they read the second half, you start editing that so that you've got something that's mostly ready to go so that then you're ready for your line edits. And again, you want to line somebody up who is going to be good at doing your line edits, making sure, you know, run it through spell check and then have somebody who knows their crap about grammar and sentence structure and things like that take a look at it so that, you know, they can go through and really give it a hardcore red pen markup of this word is missing. This is the wrong word in this spot. Uh, this should be its own sentence. I'm terrible when it comes to formatting dialogue. Like, I'm really bad at it. I will end sentences with a period, finish the quotes, and then go, he said, which I know is wrong now. So I have to go through <laughs> and edit mine so that the end of every sentence of dialogue 
if I do he said, she said, Rafe said, blah, 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 I can put a comma and close quote because I'm terrible at it. So I need somebody who's good at going back and doing that. I'm lucky I've got those people. But make sure you have those lined up. Like I said, I've got somebody I can totally rely on for that. Um, I've done it for Shavam. For his first book, I did the final edit, which I know I didn't catch everything. I'm dyslexic. Nobody should rely on me for editing, but that's going to be a big thing, especially if you're self-publishing. Your book will stand out more just because you edit it well. Because you don't know how many people are really peeved off when they read a self-published book with misspellings, wrong words, missed words. It just drives us crazy. I'm like, it's an insult to everybody <laughs> if you don't take the time to make the reading experience for your readers as smooth and entertaining as possible. People will want to read your work if you make it fun and easy for them to read it. So you want to do that for your alpha readers as much as you can, your beta readers as much as you can, and your readers 100% as much as you can. You want to make your book as immersive, easy to read, and fun or interesting as you can. And eliminating just your basic spelling and grammar, your, um, oh, what do they call that? Spelling and grammar. You, you want to get your spag as good as possible. So line those people up now so that they're ready when you're ready, so that we can meet that year-end deadline. And if you're watching this three years from now, you don't have to do that. But the rest of you, you totally do. So you can email me, stillaweb at getwriting.wang. Yes, it's real, I promise. I'll totally be on Twitter, at stillaweb, I promise. I have a Facebook. I don't like using the Facebook because then I have to get out of my personal Facebook and into the other one. It's just a pain in my rectum. If they made it easier, I would totally do it. But it's at this point where I'm trying to separate my author self from my personal self because you guys don't need to see all the other crap about like my friends feeds and all that. Like they should be separate. But getting in and out of them? Oh my gosh, nightmare. Why is this not made easier? No, because Facebook wants all of your personal information, so they want everything you do to be in one profile. Like, well, no, screw you, Facebook. I don't want to do that. So, I don't really do that. So, I'm sorry. My Facebook is is crap. There's not much on there. But I'll totally get on Twitter because those are super duper easy to keep separate because I just have them on two different devices. I know you think I could do that on Facebook, but the problem is I'm trying to keep track of friends because I do D&D &D and stuff, and I need to know, is there a game? Is there not? So, I need to be able to log in on any of my devices to be able to check this stuff. So I hate logging in and out of Facebook. I, I hate Facebook. I'll be honest. It's horrible. It's the worst. But everybody's on it, so I'm stuck. So anyway, you guys keep writing. Like I said, I'm at 51,000 words today. Yes! So tomorrow, 52,000 words. So I'm getting there. I'm, I'm catching up. You guys keep writing. I'm going to keep writing. And I will see you guys Sunday when we talk about comedy. So, see you guys later.